Uh, Mr. Sams, mm. what in the world are you doing up there? Bouncing on one foot. You're pretty good at that, but um, I thought we were like teaching about chemistry. We are. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah. So you're equilibrating. I am. Oh, I get it. Yeah, equilibrium. I'm... Equilibrating. You are. Yeah, I keep having to adjust. As my mass shifts, I have to kind of adjust to accommodate for that. But you know, I think in a chemical equilibrium, uh -huh. it's a little different deal. Eh, close enough. It's, it's, it's something else. It's like, yeah, I think you should get down so yeah, you can actually learn. Myself. You're going to fall down and break my, my podcasting Break microphone. your microphone? That's your biggest concern? Well, Thanks. You're, you're yeah, welcome. I'm, I'm feeling loved today. I'm glad you are. Yes. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. We're going to do Podcast 13.1. We're going to talk about... Uh, Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Yeah. So today it's equilibrium land. Hey, what is it? That's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Equilibrium constant, pressure. This is uh, 13.1 yep. and then 13.2 here. So got two podcasts in this particular chapter to chat about. Go. Hey, let's start with an analogy. Okay. Equilibrium. All right, boys and girls, men and women. You got the men and the women. All right. You've got the boy and you take a girl and you make a couple. Yes. That is a system of equilibrium. It is. Why is that a system of equilibrium? Well, especially around here in high school land, uh, boys hook up with girls and couples always re-break up. Yeah, you see, like, boys meet girls mm -hmm. and then they make couples. Yeah. And then everything lives happily ever after, right? <coughs> Sorry. What, 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 why are you laughing? Because, well, you know, we know. We, we observe them on a yeah, daily basis. Yeah, you see, we've, we've been around teenagers for mm -hmm. probably way too long. And we've noticed that the reverse reaction sometimes occurs. Yeah. In fact, it probably happens at the same frequency as the forward reaction. You Pretty see, close. this is sort of a new thing to learn about in chemistry land. The double arrow. The arrow that goes forward and backwards. So we have this problem. The boys and the girls, they get together. But they also break up. Mm. The double arrow. I'm afraid we have seen this very often in our classes, actually in our school life. They break up, the boy meets the girl, they get happy, and then they get mad, and they break <laughs> up. It is a reversible process. It is. It is always reversible. Sad, sad day. But you know it's true because it's happened to all of you, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. So sometimes when the forward reaction happens, I typically see happy, happy faces. And when the reverse reaction happens, I typically see sad face. Yes, indeed. So this is a great analogy, Mr. Sams. It is. To uh, 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 reversible reactions. Yeah, all reactions are reversible. No, that's not true. I would disagree. There are some reactions that are not reversible. If I take a piece of paper and I burn it, I cannot turn it back into a piece of paper with the carbon dioxide and the water and mm -hmm. eh, maybe a small chance. But uh, some reactions are highly reversible yes. and some are not, not very so reversible. reversible. But th we're going to be talking now about reactions that are primarily reversible. All right. So we could think of it like a dance. Who's present at the dance? Chaperones. True. But the chaperones don't matter. Oh. Okay. And you know, you kids who are watching this, you know the chaperones don't matter. You've got the <laughs> boy, the, the chaperones, and you've got the girl. Right? Probably should give her some arms. <laughs> Boys and girls. But what happens? They collide. And of course, they make couples. And they live happily ever after until, of course, they break up and then they're not so happy. Mm -hmm. All right. song in. So we could graph this. Yep. All right. So let's think more chemically. All right. All right. If we start at the dance. Now, let's assume that nobody comes to the dance with a, with a, as a couple. Okay. So we'll start here with... Um, the ad hoc dance. Yes. <laughs> this number of boys. And as the dance progresses, you will have the boys diminish. You right. have less boys. Now, that's sort of weird to say that there are less boys. Well, you're either a boy or you're a couple. So once you become a couple, you're not a boy anymore. Right. And so, and the girls, let's say for the sake of argument that uh, more girls went to the dance, right? Okay. And so what's going to happen is that they're going to diminish too. But eventually, they're going to reach a point. Mm -hmm. And the number of couples that are going to happen as time progresses, blue, maybe a blue, is there will be no couples, but as time progresses there will be a steady number of couples. Mm -hmm. So this is the couples. Couples? Couples. And this would be the girls. Mm -hmm. And these are the boys. Okay? And so you have the couples. But actually, even though 
we have now reached a point. This point we would call equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Even though you've reached this point, it's as if a lot of people think that it's now boring. You oh. have the same number of boys and girls and couples. But you see, this process is said to be dynamic. dynamic. Hence the next slide. Actually, it's a couple of slides later. I think we've already said that. So the definition of equilibrium, uh, this is said to be dynamic. What is the definition of equilibrium, actually, as per that graph? That's when the uh, rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So for every couple that breaks up, another one gets formed at the same time. So it's not boring. It's not like everyone is now stuck in their coupleness or not, um, but the couples keep shuffling around. So you're dancing with new people and getting to meet some new friends and so on. So dynamic means that it is in constantly changing. Not, not the amount. Right. Constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the amount of people changing is not changing. Right. But the ones who are there are changing. Yeah. You see. Kind of like you have a mainland and you have an island. And the island can only support 20 people. And there's yeah. a bridge going to the island. And cars are constantly going to the island and from the island. The number of people on the island doesn't change, but the actual people on the island do change because the cars are constantly going and coming. But there's always 20 people on the island. Yeah, this would be like, uh, this would be a city, and this is the island off the city, right? Yeah. And the cars go across in one direction probably in the morning because mm -hmm. it's time to commute to work or whatever, and then they commute the other direction. And so the um, rate of the forward in a, in a given day, let's say, yeah. is uh, equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So yeah. that's another uh, good analogy. You know, another thing that we could do, l let's talk about this. So folks, um, here's an, an example. I want you just to take a look at this um, flask, which has a stopper in it, and it is a sealed system. And so what we've got going on here, it's, it's a dynamic equilibrium. Now if you look at this, you would pretend, you'd say it's kind of kind of boring. It's just a flask of water, right? But if you look carefully at the flask, um, you will notice there's some condensation on this flask. That condensation, of course, is the water. What, where did that come from? Well, you see the water evaporated. It went from the flask, um, from, the, from the liquid state to the gaseous state. So that is like the um, breaking up of the couples. Okay, and then you also have the formation of the couples. The water vapor in this, that's in this flask, is condensing, and you can see them condensing, forming. And so if this is at a state of equilibrium, which it is, is the rate of the forward reaction, the rate of the evaporation, is equal to the rate of the... Um, condensation. Let me write this on the screen here while you see this. So essentially this is water um, liquid is turning into, but double arrow here, into water gas. And this is a dynamic equilibrium happening here in the flask. Now scientists are not just happy um, with the reaction of being saying, well, it's dynamic. We actually prefer to like measure it. We love numbers. Mm. Science and math, they actually go together, amazing. So let's take a particular reaction where we have J, A, K, B, N, C, M, D. So it's like a double replacement reaction where the J, the K, the N, and the M represent the um, coefficients, coefficients yeah. in the balanced equation. So there's something called the um, K. The K value is the equilibrium constant. constant. Now, I know you spell constant with a C, but I don't know. We just we use Cs for other things. Maybe it's German. So the equilibrium constant has a particular form. Well, you just basically take, it'll be the products over the reactants. It's also called the law of mass action. Law of mass action, yep. which we've said oh, up right here, there. but I didn't Sorry. actually say it. But it's called the law of mass action, where you would say the concentration, that, remember constant like moles per liter, of C to the power of N times the concentration of D, those are my two reactants, to the power of M, divided by the concentration of A to the power of J times the concentration of B to the power of K. And this would be a number, and it would vary depending on you know the concentration. So if you are at equilibrium, you know this should be a double arrow, Mr. Sanders. You should, you're right. That should be a double arrow. So this is double arrow, so C, whatever the molarity is, to the N power, D to the M power, on top, a and B on the bottom to their appropriate powers, J and yep. K. And that is equal to K. And the this K. is called the equilibrium constant, sometimes called KC, or just big K. Yep. All right? And this is, one thing about K is it does change, uh -huh. and it changes only with one variable. That would be? Temperature. temperature. Only changes if you change the temperature. Only the temperature. Only the temperature. 
All right. Just only the- changes if you change the temperature. So if I were to change the uh, molarity, what would happen? Well, K doesn't change. But but I changed something. No. It's only the temperature. temperature. So if I change the pressure? No. No. If I change, I add a catalyst? No. If I uh, make it orange? No. Okay. Only with the temperature. Okay. Now, what the heck does K mean? All right. So there's three sort of varieties. (laughs) Uh, My son's learning that. He just learned K a couple days ago. All right. K can be (laughs) either greater than one, less than one, or just about equal to one. When K is greater than one, actually, if we just kind of look at it, it's a mathematical expression. Yeah. So if this number is uh, bigger than one, Mm -hmm. that means that the top number is big compared to the small number. Right. The bottom number. So therefore, that means you have what? More products than reactants. That means more products. Conversely, if we have a little number on, say, products over reactants... Then you have a small, okay, less than one. So that would be, I think went the wrong direction tonight. Then that would give you a, so as K is smaller than one, then you have more reactants. Actually, when we say more products, by the way, we also say that the reaction shifts to the right. And if it's K to the left, it shifts yeah. to the left. Or favors the forward reaction, favors the reverse yeah. reaction. So yeah. So let's, let's say favors here. Favors the arrow to the right, and that means the forward yeah, reaction. Yeah, we're not really shifting in this stage of the game. Yeah, we're not shifting. It just favors one of them. Yeah. And if K is about equal to 1, we've yeah, got about the same. About the same. About, uh, now, that's not exactly always the same. About, let me write this down so I don't try and talk and write the same right. It's relative to their coefficients. And yeah, because sometimes stuff, if you've got yeah. a squared in the top and a cubed in the bottom, it kind yeah. of changes things. But yeah. that's, that's roughly true. Okay? All right. Now, we can also not just talk about the concentration. We can write an equilibrium expression that talks about pressure. Right. And actually, not just pressure, but partial pressure. Yes. Partial pressure. Partial. All right. I need a double arrow here. Okay. Did you so, know the K only changes if you change the temperature? Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is actually not called the KC, but notice it's called the KP. Puh, for the pa pressure. For pressure. And so I take the pressure of the ammonia, the NH3. Now, the product. Now, as a note, the symbology of writing partial pressures is you could put capital P, and then you put the chemical, whatever it might be, X, and then, yeah, that's it. Symbology? Symbology, is that a word? I don't know, but I like, like it. like Scientology. <laughs> you know, that's something different. Okay. Uh, symbology. 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 I like it. Symbology. All right, so if I square this, I, why did I square that, Mr. Because Sim- there's two coefficients. I also put in parentheses to you, by the way, just the way I did. And the ammonia is squared because of the two. So it's basically still products over reactants. Yes, sir. Over the partial pressure of the nitrogen. So you, you do this like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. This there's would be the first linear. power um, because there's a one in front of the nitrogen. And in front of the hydrogen. All right, everybody take time. Think, think. What should I put in there? Come on, Lee. I know you know the answer to this question. That's correct. Cube it. All right, sorry, I picked on Lee because... He sometimes is a slacker. So, okay. <laughs> Not and he forgets his units. And he forgets his units, yeah. Okay. And actually, he's already watched this podcast, so I guess for the rest of the world, you'll have to figure out who Lee is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And lastly, on this podcast, we do want to say that there is a relationship, a relationship, between KC and KP. And that's very simply this. KP is equal to KC times RT to the power of the delta N. All right, we got to make sure we know. KP, we talked about, right? Yep. The pressure constant. Yep. The concentration constant. Sometimes, uh-huh. by the way, we can just call that K. R is the gas constant. Now, Which since we one? are talking about pressures. Which one? Since we're going to – let's kind of work – typically, we like to work in atmosphere since there's a pressure thing. So I would say 0.0821. That one would be your best choice. If you use the 8.314, then you'll get your pressure in kilopascals. Kilopascals. And the temperature must be in Kelvin degrees. Now, we do have one other thing. What the heck is del- del- delta? Delta N is to change the number of moles of gas. Change in moles of gas. Now, let's go back to this problem right here for Mr. Sams. <laughs> what would delta N be in this case? Uh, negative 2. Negative 2. So how, how did you get the negative 2? Well, You're if it's correct. a change in number of moles of gas. So on the left-hand side of the equation, we have 1 mole of nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen. That's a total of 4 moles of gas. That goes down to 2 moles of ammonia. That's 2 moles of gas. 
So we started with 4, went down to 2. That's a change of minus 2. You went down by 2. Yeah. You also could think of it as products minus reactants. Right. 2 minus 4, negative mm -hmm. 2. So delta n in this case would be negative 2. So if you knew, let's just do this just for fun. Let's say that we knew that the Kc for this particular reaction was uh, 22. And we were trying to find it at uh, uh, 400 degrees Celsius. That was true at 400 degrees Celsius. What would the Kp be? Oh, I, you got to make me do math. I know. Well, well, we need a reaction. Is it the reaction we yeah, just did? Yeah, the reaction we just did. Okay. So Kc is 22, which means that the products would be favored. And so I'd say 22 times RT, so this is 0 0.0821 times, now the temperature, we have to do it to convert that to Celsius, or from Celsius to Kelvin, so 273, that'd be 673 uh, Kelvin, and to the delta N, now delta N would be to the power of negative, negative two, 2, as you recall. Now remember, if you powers, you have to do this to the negative 2 power first, then multiply by 22, mm -hmm. right, mathematically, and Mr. Sams, I think, has tristly found the calculator answer. It would get uh, 4.86 times 10 to the negative 5. And actually, this actually brings up. Oh wait, no, we don't, because I just put. Oh, okay, I screwed something up. So Mr. Sam's is wrong. I am wrong. I hit the plus button instead of the times button. Somewhere. Oh yeah, that's not going to work. If you yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I this just is a times, mistake. not a plus. Just a moment to the negative two power times, times twenty-two. 20. There we go. Now it's uh, seven point two times ten to the negative third. Now, folks, notice about this. We haven't really said this, but what are the units on K? Uh, we don't care. Yeah, the important thing about K's, the capital K's, and we're going to learn lots about capital K's over the next actually months. It's a, kind of a big topic, uh, equilibrium constants. But the unit on K, there is no unit. There, right. there technically kind of might be a unit, but since it varies, scientists do not worry about the unit on K. So here we've been talking about how important it is to have units. But guess what? In the unit, at least for the unit for K, um, what did I just do? The unit for K, there is no unit. No unit on K. Good with that? I'm good with that. Okay. Simple. So. Um, any last thoughts on uh, the boys and girls and couples, Mr. Sams? Um, I know one couple that dated in high school that are still together today. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we'll talk later about you know like complete dissociation. Yeah. What's true about all high school romances? They all break up, except for your friends. Exactly. But it, you they're know, the one. Exception. But you guys out there in the internet land, you know that you're not going to stay with him or her. Mm. So be nice to him or her. Yeah. Okay. And uh, don't mistreat them, exactly. so that you don't have regrets and things. So. Friendly advice from nice. the chemistry teachers. Be nice. Be happy. Mm. You know, like a song? Be happy, be nice. Don't like worry. A, mm, be happy. Yes, we have the music going. Yes, we <laughs> You need help, Mr. Sam. You must be balancing. Should I try the balance thing? I balance. Don't forget you're old. And you're <laughs> I'm gonna, old, but you're I, gonna fall. I am a good athlete. That's true. Surf in USA. I surf USA. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>